special guest with us tonight, uh, Daryl Holiday. Daryl, if you'll join me on stage, uh, it's time for our nonprofit spotlight. Let's give it up for Daryl. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, I'm going to hand this one off to you. Happy to be here. So please give us uh, a little bit of background. On City Bureau? Yes, uh, please. City Bureau is a nonprofit journalism lab based on the south side of Chicago, uh, run by four people. It's uh, four, four kids making trouble. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, and so you have this really great project called documenters.org. Um, which is about government transparency and helping folks know when public meetings are happening and what's going on in their community uh, in terms of policy and government. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, Documenters, the, the program is the website, documenters.org. Uh, there are more than a 1,000 people involved in the Documenters program. They are trained and paid by City Bureau uh, to keep elected officials uh, honest, keep them accountable. So they are attending public meetings, uh, they are live tweeting, they are taking notes where there is uh, an absence of uh, journalists covering those events, so there's decisions being made, uh, no one's there. These decisions affect all of our lives, so we have people trained and paid to go out and, and make sure that, that there's some accountability there. That's awesome, and so I understand that there is also an app that uh, coincides with documenters, and is that where uh, these folks who are attending these meetings are recording the information th that they're discovering? Yeah, that's right. It does uh, two things, really, or, or three things, really. It uh, scrapes and standardizes all the public meetings and the records that are happening in local government, puts it all in one place. Uh, it allows us to manage and deploy all these documenters, and they are able to submit all their content, their live tweets, their photos, video, audio, notes, and, and all that becomes public. That's amazing. Uh, and then I assume this application is free for anyone to access, right? Yep. Anyone can access it. You attend one training with us, and you can get paid uh, 16 bucks an hour to hold some people accountable. Wow, that's awesome. I wish someone would pay me $16 an hour to attend meetings. I'd be all over it. Okay, come, come see me. <laughs> cool. And so is Documenters operating just in Chicago, or are, are there people attending meetings and uh, sharing this information with communities uh, in other places? Uh, right now, the program is growing. It's based in Chicago. We are also in Detroit. Uh, we are beginning some work in Cleveland and Akron. And uh, we're looking for more cities, more partners, more people who want to see this kind of program uh, exist. That's awesome. And I know uh, the Open Media Foundation slash Denver Open Media has also been working on a government transparency project. And so there's probably really great potential for some partnership here, right? Absolutely. They do a wonderful job. There's a lot of uh, complementary potential there that we're excited about, you know, t t talking further through. All right. That's awesome. Uh, so we do have uh, a quick video. Um, and for folks tuning in, you'll just be listening. Uh, so let's start at that. It's documenters.org video, give us some more information. Cool, cool. Awesome, thank you for joining us, Daryl. Yeah, thanks for having me. In your city or town, there are dozens, maybe even hundreds of public meetings each month. They're important spaces for democracy, where anyone can drop in and have a voice in local government. What happens in those meetings affects your everyday life, but there are so many hosted by all different agencies, and it's hard to keep up with all of them. Some are covered by local news, but a lot of them aren't. Some publish agendas, official votes, and their own meeting notes, but a lot of them don't. Some are canceled, and nobody even notices. And all the information is split up on different websites, a lot that are hard to find or not updated regularly. At Documenters.org, we're collecting and standardizing all this information so you can access it anytime. And we host free trainings and pay you to attend these meetings and take notes. Together, we're creating a new public record to shine a light on decisions being made in our city because you deserve to know. Documenters.org. Find the meeting information you want, get trained and paid to go to them, and get our original reporting delivered to your inbox. Let's reimagine local journalism together.
Awesome. Documenters.org. Thank you so much to Daryl for joining us today, uh, traveling all the way from Chicago to let us know about a really great program that they're working on over there in the Midwest. Um, and hopefully we'll be seeing something like that pop up here in Denver uh, and helping us to keep our local government officials uh, accountable and making sure that our folks are engaged and really driving journalism at the local level because, uh, as we all know, news is crazy, media is crazy, and there's a lot of sensationalized national coverage, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going on locally. So uh, shout out to City Bureau and Documenters.org for really uh, pushing us into uh, a new age of local journalism. So. That's awesome. Let's give it up for documenters at Oregon City Bureau. All right, all right, cool, cool. Well, so we've gotten through a bit of serious business and now it's time to laugh. Who here is ready to laugh tonight? You guys ready for some jokes? All right, yeah, yeah. Those hard times, you know, uh, comedy helps us get through them. So our first comic of the night is Ben Bryant. I'd like to welcome Ben to the stage. Let's give it up for Ben. All right, awesome. Ben, thanks for joining us and take it away. Yeah, two mics, double the comedy, all right. No, this is good, this is good. Which mic is funnier? You people are fickle. There's, public access is fun, because we get to go from like, all right, the government's trying to screw you over, and we will pay you for the government to stop ruining our lives. And now here's Ben Bryant, who does some pretty good impressions of presidents and Fred Flintstone, so. Get into that. I am uh, excited to be here tonight on The Tonight Show. Uh, this is good. This is exciting. Uh, the secret to television, they told me, direct eye contact. You want to look directly at the microphone or microphone camera. Yeah, you want to look directly at the microphone. People like that. No, I am glad to be here uh, performing in this TV studio because I was recently performing in a country bar. Uh, if you've never been to a country bar, don't. Uh, they suck. Uh, it's a lot like a renaissance fair where nobody knows that it's fake. Just <laughs> every single guy in there is dressed like an extra in Walker, Texas Ranger. Just the same hat and shirt from Ross. Like they're just waiting on Chuck Norris to just kick in the door and be like, you, me, Hollywood, you just got cast. Let's go. Get in my Ford. We're friends now. Like that's what they think is going to happen. Um, Country bars are weird because they do line dancing. Y'all ever seen line dancing? Uh, it's dancing for white people, by white people. Uh, it's dancing from the pockets down, which like, what? That's not sexy or fun at all. If you haven't seen it, I can only describe it visually as a man trying to stomp down the concept of criticism. If criticism was a groundhog that only he could see, you know? It's just like, get the hell out of my way, wizard, you don't know my fucking, you know? Good. It's a good, good full body act out when TV shoots from the crotch up. That's something I've learned in my long career. This is, these are my crotch pants, by the way, everybody. I pad my, I pad my crotch with a bra, and it works, works pretty well. Uh, I don't like men. I think they're gross. Uh, men do a lot of gross stuff like catcalling. You know, they'll just uh, you see somebody on the street, and they'll be like, Hey, baby! <laughs> Smile! Hey! Hello! Smile! Gross. Also, not even an effective strategy. Not even a good way to get a woman to smile. You can't just yell the command at her and expect that to work, you know? You gotta yell something at her that would make her smile, you know? So you gotta be like, hey! Imagine a baby French bulldog struggling to climb up a bunch of stairs. <laughs> you know, or like, hey baby girl, have you ever seen one of those YouTube videos of a deaf baby get a cochlear implant and hear its mother's voice for the first time? Like, hey, baby girl, if the five-year-old version of you could see the amazing woman you've grown into, she'd be so proud. <laughs> or my personal favorite, hey, bitch, you hear the McRib is back. That's a good one, people like that. <laughs> the point of my set is you got to use your voice for power, everybody. you got to use your voice for power. I like doing voices, I like doing characters. I'm going to do a couple for you guys. This first one, this is Fred Flintstone asking who took all of his gay rocks. Here we go. Fred Flintstone asking who took all his gay rocks. Bonnie, where are my fruity pebbles? Thank you. It's Fred Flintstone asking. It's a, all right, this next character, this is Bill Clinton at a spelling bee. Here we go. Bill Clinton at a spelling bee. <laughs> well, you got to define sex. Thank you. That's Bill Clinton <laughs> at a spelling bee. 
Now, how do you do a Bill Clinton? Well, first you do a Hank Hill, and then you make it sound like he gets laid all the time. You know, it's just uh, uh, propane and propane. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> now you're in Clinton Town, baby. There's always saxophone playing in Clinton Town. <laughs> Presidents. All right, this next character, this is Barack Obama giving a speech, but when he pauses, he doesn't let out his signature um, he lets out a loud, alarmed shriek. My fellow Americans, this election season, we need to come together more than ever <laughs> to focus on the things that unite us as a country <laughs> rather than being divided. <laughs> okay, this next character, this is the whole rest of the show, by the way. They gave me 60 minutes to run characters. Now, last one. This is the racist dog, everybody. This is if a dog was racist. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really see color. Thank you, that's the racist <laughs> dog. As if a doggy was racist. I, uh, I like animals. I follow a bunch of animals on Instagram. Uh, there is one that I follow. His name is Barsic. Uh, he's a very, very fat cat. Uh, it's very in right now for cats to be fat. Um, Barsic is 42 pounds. And if you don't know how unbelievably fat that is, the average cat is 12 pounds. And the average monster truck tire is 50 pounds. <laughs> So this cat is closer to a monster truck than a cat. And he's losing the weight, and it's inspiring, and whatever, and it's nice. Uh, in, in the Instagram stories, the owner posted, because the cat doesn't speak English, uh, it was like was they were doing a DNA test for the cat. And they were like, what do you, what do you guys think most of our six DNA is? What do you think most of the kitty's DNA is? Uh, and I wrote back, cheeseburger. and. That really upset the fat cat community. I don't know if you guys are aware of the internet fat cat community, but they're out there and they're pretty active. It consists mostly of children and women who are mad about something else. And uh, they really went after me. You're really not allowed to fat shame a cat. Uh, like what, why? It's super fine. It's so okay. You can tell, cats don't understand English. You can say the worst stuff to your cat and he'll be fine. He'll walk away fine. Go up to your cat and just flip him off and just go, your dad was right. And your cat will be fine. In comedy, a lot of people get mad about like PC culture. They're like, oh, how come I can't just be inconsiderate to everyone's feelings all the time and say whatever awful stuff I want. Get a cat, get a cat and just go home and be like, wow, nice to see my gay cat again. Ah, you're here still, get a job, you know? And that's how you just bring yourself inner peace. I'm dating, dating is tough. I don't have segues either, segues are tougher than dating. I <laughs> went on a date with this girl who was a gold digger, which uh, I'd never really experienced before. That was pretty interesting. Um, we went out to dinner and we got the check and I was like, hey, um, do you wanna split this maybe? And this gold digger just goes, uh, well, I don't know how I'd go about paying for the darn thing. I don't have no bout of money except for these nuggets what I panned out of the river earlier. I've got to hope that there are bartering folk here at the Olive Garden. All I have is my wares and my labor. And I was like, this date's going pretty well. This is it's pretty cool. Uh, I've been traveling a lot for comedy lately. I have been uh, going to the airport a lot where I have to deal with the TSA. I don't like the TSA. They're bad at their jobs. Uh, but this is something a uh, little bit fun that you can take home with you. Uh, do you guys know there's no law against boning during a pat down? Did you know that? <laughs> no laws, zero laws. Next time you're at the airport, try it out for yourself. You know, mess with the TSA a little bit. Just as soon as they start the pat down, just be like, <laughs> you know all my spot. <laughs> Say stuff they'll never forget. Be there 9-11 too, you know? Just as soon as, just, mm, you know all my spots, grandfather. You know, ruin their day. And they're not good at their jobs. So my favorite people who are really bad at their jobs are the ghost hunters. Um, <laughs> because through 11 seasons and 237 episodes, they have caught no ghosts. Zero ghosts, not a single ghost. You would never watch a fishing show where they're just like, damn it, ah, the, ah. the radar heavily implies that they are down there. We'll see you next week, we'll be back, <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, I learned some interesting information recently. I learned that the people at the gun range get pretty concerned when you use a picture of yourself as a target. <sighs> they don't like that. 
I'm kidding. I wouldn't joke about depression or suicide. No, it's very serious. I um, struggle with it myself. I thought I actually beat depression, but it just turns out I'd been eating a lot of cake. Uh, <laughs> It turns out depression doesn't disappear. You know, it doesn't vanish, doesn't go away. It's, uh, it's not like being gay. And, uh, okay, I'm kidding. If you can't tell, I'm being facetious and I'm making fun of people who think that. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but there are people out there who think that you can change somebody's sexuality by electrocuting them. Uh, and those people don't know anything about people or electricity. Like, what are you talking about? If that was even a little bit true, being an electrician would be like a billion percent different of a job. <laughs> There'd just be some like straight electrician like messing with your power outlet and he'd be like, hope it's not the gay electricity this time. <laughs> oh, crap, it was, God dang it. Someone bring me a dick and a stat. Oh, suddenly I know how to dress myself and empathize with other people. <laughs> people are mad about it though. People are mad about gay stuff. Just ask any of your relatives. And they're like, well, well what's gonna happen, huh? What's gonna happen if we like gay people get married? What's gonna happen next? People are gonna wanna marry dogs? And it's like, yes. <laughs> You're not gonna go to a man-dog wedding. You're the most boring person I've ever met. Just get the invitation at some weirdo holding a corgi way too tight. Get to the wedding, you immediately know who's on the bride's side, who's on the groom's. It's just golden retrievers and people from Connecticut. No wedding cake, it's just peanut butter. We all know why. I, uh, I think we'll end on that note. I think we'll end on that, everybody. Thank you very much for having me, Open Media. I'm Ben Bryant. All right, Ben Bryant, everyone, give it up. Was that hilarious or what? Those are great. Thank you. That's I, I enjoyed the impressions. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of really good impressions. So, Thank you. Uh, how did you get started in comedy? Um, I didn't make uh, a sports team that I wanted to in college. And then I was like, well, I need a new goal. And here we are uh, on top of the world. I'd say so. OMS is the top of the comedy world, if you haven't realized already. Oh, I love it. You guys are great. It's a great place. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so you said you've been traveling for a lot of comedy. Where are you going? Uh, L.A., New York, Asheville, uh, the Dakotas. Uh, getting paid for very little of it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just everywhere. Everywhere that'll have me. Which Dakota is your favorite? West Dakota? Uh, I guess I technically got arrested in one of them. Oh, that so sounds fun. That, <laughs> Probably North Dakota. <laughs> Are there any jokes around that? No, no, <laughs> no. That was... Not a laughing matter? That's pretty funny. <laughs> Just a bad writer. Awesome. All right, well, Ben, thank you so much. Hey, uh, yeah, thank where you. can the folks see you again? Uh, I host a uh, weekly show every Saturday at the Irish Snug in the basement called Denver Comedy Underground. Uh, also, at the end of every Friday, I host a show at the bakery called Guest List. You can check me out on uh, YouTube where we are currently releasing a web series called Spaghetti High. Uh, so check out all that. All right, awesome. Ben Bryan, everyone. Let's give him a round of applause. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, we've got more comedy for you coming right up our next comic is anthony crawford all right give it up for anthony let's go what's up uh let's see let's get into it uh i went to olive garden to eat earlier this week not bragging and and the waiter was super nice the waiter was super cool came up with the food he was like man does everything look okay i was like brother everything looks fantastic He's like, would you like some Parmesan cheese? Hell yeah, I want some Parmesan cheese. Spread it, baby. <laughs> and he was like, all right, cool. Well, how much do you want? I don't know, a gram? What you mean how much I want, dude? Just, just give me some cheese, man. You know what? Forget it. Give me an eight ball of Parmesan cheese, man. You know what? I feel like dining like a rock star. <laughs> uh... I write all my jokes high. I don't know if y'all uh, have caught on to this. Uh, <laughs> I honestly do. Uh, but it's funny. It's the only way I could really deal with a lot of stuff in the world, especially racism. Racism irritates me a lot. And I saw a lot of it, because uh, I just got back from the road, uh, back from New Orleans two weeks ago. And it's funny. New Orleans is a great town. If you've never been there, go. It's just as fun as everybody makes it seem. You know, uh, but 
New Orleans did teach me this, and that's that all black people go to heaven. Didn't know that until New Orleans. <laughs> Had no clue, you know? Because I don't know if y'all ever been to New Orleans before, but they have nothing but ghost tours all over the city, you know? And I did a couple of them. I did a couple of these ghost tours, and on one of them, they took us to a plantation. And the, and the tour guide was like, this plantation was one of the largest in New Orleans history. And in this very square that we're standing in, hundreds of slaves were executed because they either disobeyed or tried to escape. And it's rumored that at night, you can see the owner. I can't think, I can't remember what his name is, something French. Anyway. <laughs> The owner wandering the grounds, looking for slaves that escaped. Are there any more questions? Yeah. So there's no black ghost? There's no black ghost there. You just said hundreds of people were executed here. And there's just one white dude looking for them. That's pretty much it. So we made it. Basically, looks like we made it. You know what I'm saying? Is that the case? Is that, <laughs> like, is that our reparations? We don't have to haunt no more? Is that it? Because, dude, they only brought up one black person during both of the ghost tours, and she was just a voodoo priestess that cursed the place. She wasn't even there. You know what I mean? Like, you, you walk in that place and get gout or something like that. I can't remember what you get. But she wasn't even there. Is that our, is that our reparations? Like, the first black ghost that showed up was like, wait a minute, you want me to do what? You want me to wander and moan? and close some doors and rattle some chain. Man, rattle these nuts. I ain't doing none of this. <laughs> Just made me laugh. There's no black ghost. This one, New Orleans was like one of the largest slave ports in, in United States history. No black ghost. We did it. <laughs> I have no choice but to laugh at racism sometimes, man. I can't, I can't help it, you know? like. Like, it's funny to me, like, I, I honestly love woke white people. I love them. Mm, make my day better. You know, they fight for me. They argue on my behalf. I hope every white person in here woke as hell. I hope it is. I hope every last one of them. The ones I don't like are the almost woke white people. I like to call them sleepy. The sleepy, <laughs> sleepy whites. I don't like them. I don't like, the, I don't like the sleepy whites. You know what I mean? Because them the ones that will argue and fight for me, but still complain about me. You know, like they basically treat black folk like raisins and raisin bran. <laughs> yes, I was very high. This is going to come together in a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so feel me on this. So basically, it's like they pour themselves a bowl, right? And there'll be two raisins in there. And they'll be like, hey, where are all the raisins? I came here expecting so many more raisins. If I didn't want raisins, I just would have got bran. But I came here for the flavor and the culture. <laughs> but then on the flip side, they'll pour themselves a bowl, and there'll be nothing but raisins in there. And they'll be like, yo, where the hell did all these raisins come from? Why are there so many raisins right now? Is this safe? Should I be concerned? Should I write a letter? <laughs> now, I'll get y'all behind the scenes on that joke. When I first originally wrote that joke, I was like, all right, cool, comparing black folk to raisins. All right, I'm going to make a joke about first-generation Africans and call them plums. And then I realized I was way too high because that's not where raisins come from. You know what I mean? Like, raisins come from grapes, and that would have messed up the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh at racism. There's only one time racism really bugged me. It's only one time. It was, uh, it was back home in North Carolina. That's where I'm originally from. Yep, that's what I expected. And, uh, and I remember it was right before I moved here to Denver. I moved here like five and a half years ago. And I, I, I remember I went over to my best friend's house, and his house was a wreck. Trashed. Dixie and solo cups everywhere, you know? People passed out in his bushes. You know, there was, a, there was a keg and a folding table in his backyard swimming pool. You know? When I walked up to him, I was like, yo, man, what, what happened here last night? 
And he was like, dude, it's a white guy, dude, epic, epic pool party, man. We had everything here last night. We had everything, women, weed, alcohol. It was catered. We had a DJ. Man, it was like Project X in here last night. It was the best night of my life. And I was like, man, I ain't have a gig last night. Like, I could have came to this. Why ain't you inviting me? And he was like, oh, it's because you're black. It was a pool party. We feel you couldn't swim. Why would you want to come to this? <laughs> and it hurt. It hurt a lot. Because he was right. I can't swim. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's why stereotypes hurt so much. Because every now and then, they're right about you. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I laugh off the dumb black stereotypes. You know, like the, you know all black people still. Whoa. You don't know any black people, man. Get to know us, I swear to God, we're not that bad. Well, you know all black people are violent. Whoa. You watch the news too much. <laughs> Get to know us, man. We're not that bad, I promise. We know all black people love watermelon. Wait a damn minute now, okay? That watermelon is delicious, okay? <laughs> it is delicious and nutritious, all right? And I don't need you generalizing my people and putting us in a box like that, man. I swear to God, you keep it up, I'm gonna knock you out and take your shoes. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God I will. <laughs> I like that joke too. <laughs> you know what, guys? Uh, uh, sometimes, like, like, like Ben was saying earlier, man, like depression is a thing throughout comedy. It's, it's a thing. But I've been doing comedy long enough to where I, I can like see the punchlines in life now. You know, I can see when life is trying to cheer me up. You know, and I, I'll never forget, I was, I was riding the bus here in Denver, so I was very depressed. And, <laughs> and I, got, I got off the bus and I got onto the light rail. You know, and on the light rail, I had the privilege of seeing two older white men get into a fight. <laughs> Already funny. <laughs> but what made it even better is I was listening to music on my phone at the time, you know, and swear to God, straight out of Compton started playing on my phone <laughs> right when they started fighting. And I need y'all to understand how perfect the timing was, all right? The timing was so beautiful because they had already came onto the light rail arguing, all right? They were already arguing when they got onto the train. And then the older white dude pushed the younger older white dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the younger older white dude bowed up on him. And that's when my phone went, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Like, that's when it did that. <laughs> And then, and then the younger, older white dude punched the older, older white dude in the face. You know what I mean? And that's when my phone went straight out of Compton. Crazy mother name Ice Cube. You know what I mean? And, and all the white folk on the train came together trying to break up the fight. And I know I probably should have tried to break it up. But instead, I was treating it like a concert. Just <laughs> killing it. It was the best. And it immediately cheered me up, man. It immediately cheered me up until like three weeks later. True story. This really happened. I was standing at the bus stop waiting on the bus, so I was super depressed. You know what I mean? And I was standing next to, and I was standing next to this super obviously flamboyant gay guy. All right, but he was a real cool guy, man. We he ended up being a football fan. We started talking about football. Everything was great. We're having a great conversation. And then this other guy comes walking up, handing out religious pamphlets to everybody at the bus stop. As soon as he came up to me, I was immediately like, hey, brother, nah, you hold on to that, because I'm saved. But God bless you. You keep spreading that word, because I'm from the South, and I know how to get out of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know how to get out of that, baby. Church. You know what I mean? And I get out of that. You know, so he walks to the super flamboyant gay dude, and the gay dude immediately shut him down, like, uh uh, baby. You can go ahead and hold on to your paper. Because I'm pretty sure God don't want nothing to do with me. And dude didn't even flinch. He was like, uh uh, brother. No, 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 no. We still love you. And you're always welcome into the kingdom of heaven. Because God can always turn you around. He went, ooh, I ain't know he was into that, but I'm down. Come on, guys. 
It was the best, man. It was the best. <laughs> All right. So uh, before I go, I'm going to ruin a childhood memory for you guys. All right. <laughs> totally about to ruin a childhood memory. All right. Uh, everybody in here remembers Lion King, right? Oh, yeah. This is about to get weird. All right. <laughs> So if you remember Lion King, that means you remember Rafiki. Yep. All right, imagine how it look if he was having sex. All right, this is what I came up with, all right? Picture it, all right? It's Rafiki hitting it from the back with his foot on her waist <laughs> using the staff as leverage. <laughs> Tell him some sun, squash, banana, <laughs> And when he has an orgasm, he goes, ah! Like he does that. And then she turned around talking about some Rafiki, you done already? And he goes, look within yourself. Come on, guys. <laughs> this is comedy, man. <laughs> this is comedy. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it, ain't it? That's my time, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm Anthony. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Anthony Crawford, everyone. What'd you think? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> All right, Anthony, thank yeah. you for joining us tonight, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. How long have you been doing comedy? 21 years. 21 years, yeah. faithful to the game. Yeah, unfortunately. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bad marriage. I'm stuck with her. Oh, you know, is it, is it therapeutic, though? <laughs> yeah, it actually is, because I would be a horrible human being if it wasn't for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, keeps me out of trouble. That's awesome, man. Uh, and where can folks see you if they want to see more? Uh, man, I perform all over the place, uh, uh, but... Um, I perform regularly at Comedy Works and, and the Improv uh, here in Denver. Uh, I run an awesome podcast, if y'all want to hear it, live podcast, Talking Shop. All right. Uh, if y'all want to see it, it's basically a, a free comedy class. And uh, yeah, man, just look me up on social media. I'm all over the place. That's man. awesome, man. I'll be yeah. looking out for you on public transit so I can sit next to you and you can narrate what's happening for me. I'm probably going to ignore you, but that's <laughs> cool. <All right. laughs> Headphones in to shut off to the world. Sounds good, <laughs> man. I do the same. I do the same. I do the same. <laughs> all right. Well, that's Anthony Crawford, folks. So give it up for him. Thanks, Thank guys. you for joining us. All right, this is Open Music Sessions. Thank you for tuning in if you're on the radio at 92.9 or 89.3 HD3. Thank you if you're tuning in on Facebook Live. Uh, we've got more comedy for you. There's music on the way as well. We've got a performance from the Rare Birds coming up. But before that, we've got the comedy of Evan Johnson for your face. Let's go. Come on, Evan. Yes, hi, you guys. Uh, so I'm not a big uh, sports fan. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not really a big uh, anything fan. Not a big guy in general. Um, but I do, I don't, the one sport I don't mess with at all is baseball. This is the most boring sport in the world. And that's, the problem is that like, does anyone here like baseball? Anyone into it? Anyone like baseball? Well, perfect. This is going to go great. Because uh, it sucks. It's the worst thing. It's the, it sucks. The, here's the issue is that everyone who likes baseball knows that it's boring. And it's such an easy problem to fix. All you'd have to do to make baseball more interesting is let the batter keep the bat when he's going around the bases. There you go. <laughs> Way more interesting now. Yeah, you want to make it even more interesting, give all the basemen bats too. That will be him, all right? You want to steal first base, you're going to have to bat fight for it, bro. All right? That's going to be dope. It's going to be like lightsaber fighting, but with like more athleticism. It's going to be great, all right? It's not going to be your 14-year-old cousin anymore doing that stuff. It's going to be just us. Yeah, man. Also, can't steal first base. Just realize that. Well, bat fight me over it. Um, <laughs> I don't you bat fight me, bro. I don't know. I don't like people who don't like wrestling either, like a... Like, uh, WWE, people like don't like it because it's fake. They're like, ah, oh, it's fake, it's fake. The stunts aren't what's fake though. Like the cool part isn't the fake part. The part that's fake is the plots. And so they're getting mad at people being like, they're sitting there being like, wait a second. You're telling me this guy isn't having a cage match with his own girlfriend right now? <laughs> Boo! This is why I like the NFL, real spousal abuse. That's why I enjoy it some. You guys didn't see that OJ show? It's pretty good. Uh, remember when they were allowed to do that? And then I think they're still allowed to do it. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I don't like sports. I'm, not a, I'm just not an athlete. I, you can see how I look. I just look, you know, my hair looks like a Lego piece you can snap off and put on other people. I'm aware of that, all right? 
I get it, okay? I know that I look like if they recast Wolverine as a millennial. You know what I mean? Like, if it was like, social justice, like that kind of thing where he's only pops two claws and does a hashtag. All right, that, that's better than anyone you give credit for. Um, that was pretty, just the visual. All right, uh, I don't know. My, yeah, I just, I, I get, I, I just don't like looking, I get roasted for the way I look a lot. That's the thing, like for being, like I was with my own grandparents recently, this is true, and <laughs> One of the, I was wearing a trench coat that I like to wear, thinking it makes me look cool, and my grandpa goes, he's like, oh, what's that, what's that called? That's a trench coat, right? That's what that kind of jacket is called. And my grandma looks at him and she goes, no, Lee, that's a regular sized jacket, it just looks big on him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time I've ever been glad my grandma's on oxygen. So <laughs> that lady can suck it, ah, uh, I don't know. You guys upset because you're mostly her age? All right, coming down. Ah, uh, settle down, settle down, getting righty. Righty, Riley, Jesus, I am, had too many of those free beers. Ah, uh, you guys, I, uh, I don't know, just the whole, I don't, I don't like being short, it's just, people try to pretend that being short's not a thing. That's the biggest thing I don't like about it, is that people are like, no, it's fine, you're, you're a good looking guy, it's what, it's what, you're fine, you're a handsome, you could be, the Ryan Gosling of short dudes, okay? And you still won't be a guy who gets laid a lot. All you'll be is a scale model of a guy who gets laid a lot. That's all you are. It's like from far away, you're like, oh yeah, that guy needs sex to live, and then close up, it's like, oh yeah, that guy needs a stool to reach most things. Like, it's not a fun time being short, I don't know. Really, we're gonna play that game right now? We're gonna pretend that women like short guys? What else do women like? Uh, getting paid less and being told to calm down? All right, yeah, all right. We're gonna pretend, we'll play that. Okay, yeah. Just can't only Danny Taquito, that's the most racist thing I've ever heard. I've literally been called the N-word on stage and that was even more racist than that. Mostly because I'm not that, but I don't know. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I could go into my Hispanic stuff, I don't know. I am, uh, I'm, my name is Johnson, which is weird for someone who's, I'm Hispanic and Native American mostly, like I'm a lot Native American and people love to be like, well how did that happen? How did your, how did your last name become Johnson if you're Native American? How did that happen? And I love to ask those people, how do you think that happened? <laughs> how do you, why don't you look me in my brown face and tell me how you think that? I can tell you for sure it wasn't uh, like consensual. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't one of those scenarios, I'll tell you that for sure. I don't know man. There's, I don't know, lots of weird stuff going on, man. My family's weird. Here's a fun, uh, no, I'll say that to the end. I do have some weird family stuff. I just don't, uh, seeing things have been weird, man. I've been, I don't know, I've, I think I might be a sex addict. I found that out recently, uh, which is weird because I don't have any sex at all, really. I don't <laughs> ever have sex, which I found out there is actually a word for that when you're a sex addict and you don't have sex. It's called being uh, gross. That's all that is, it's not the best, I don't know. People always assume that I would have like a lot of, I play in a band too, so people like assume I would get late from that. They're like, oh yeah, dude, you get, I play the bass, they're like, oh yeah, you're probably real good at getting chicks because you're good at like fingering and stuff. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing because I play slap bass and only some women are into that kind of stuff. <laughs> only a few, I don't know, it's very, I don't, I just, just uh, I don't, I did go on a date with a woman recently, it was pretty cool, uh, it was, she was very, very forward with me, uh, she told me that she had a rape fantasy, uh, yeah, so I just had to be upfront with her, I was like, you know, I don't really, I'm not into that, I don't really like doing that kind of stuff, and she was like, well, that's perfect. <laughs> <sighs> so she had a great night, um, I don't know, man, it's, I can't, I don't, uh, it's just weird, I don't, Here's, I don't, hey, I'll talk about my dad, because he's taller than me, and that's upsetting, and so I don't like him, and so I tried to be like a better, <laughs> tried to be a better son recently, uh, Father's Day happened uh, at some point, I don't remember, this joke was written two years ago, uh, but I was trying to be nice to my dad, and so I was like, you know what, I don't really do things for him, I'll buy him some of his favorite beer, and I'll buy him a summer shandy, which is another beer that he enjoys, and I'll drive him to his house, I text him, I was like, hey dad, I'll get you some of your favorite beer and a summer shandy for you. And you just sent me back a question mark. And I was like, oh, I, I mean, I thought you liked that. I don't know if you don't know what's going. I mean, I thought you were into those beers. And he just sent me back double question marks. And I was like, oh, I mean, if you don't know what they are, they're delicious. Like, you don't have to worry about it. And then he just was like, what, do, what is going on right now? Who are you, what are you talking about? I went back and I realized that Summer Shandy had autocorrected into Summer's Handy. <laughs> yeah, so the whole time I was like, hey, Dad, come on over with uh, some of your favorite beer and a Summer's Handy for you. 
And he was like, what is happening? And I was like, oh, I thought you were into that kind of stuff, Dad. I thought you, <laughs> thought you liked that. And he was like, who do you think I am? And I was like, don't worry. If you don't know what they are, they're delicious. So, yeah, so um, and my dad and I talk way more now, which is weird. Anyway, uh, I don't know, man. I have been trying to, like, get, I don't, it's hard for me to get women because I do this all the time. I do comedy. I'm at, the, I'm at Comedy Works a lot of times. Like, it's, that's not where, like, 23-year-old women go to hang out. So I was, like, outside of a bar on Lodo. I was like, you know what? I saw some women my age walk by, and I was like, you know, I'll just see what they're up to. Just see, probably lead to more people my age. That's a good idea. For, like, two blocks, it was a good idea until it turned out what they were up to was going home. Yeah, just followed two women home. That's all that happened, where they just got home to their apartment, turned around, and I was there like, ah, you guys live here too? That's not, that's not like, uh, that's, and then I had to kill them. So that's like a sad end to that story. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, it's just weird being just the shape I am and stuff. I don't, I don't like being, the thing about, I'm skinny. That's the thing is like people are like, oh, you don't like your body. I'm not fit. I'm skinny. And being a skinny guy is a nightmare, all right? Every time I've had a woman see me naked, without fail, every time, they won't say something like, God, I just think you're so sexy. Or like, God, I just, I love your body. But what they will say every time is, God, I wish I had your body. And that doesn't feel great. Like right after you're done doing the deed and she's like, you know what make you really hot is if you didn't have the head of a hot sauce representative. Like that's just a little bit, if you didn't look like somehow younger and older Bruno Mars. Like how does that work? I don't understand. Uh, I don't know, man. It's very, and I'm hairy too, which is like, that's, here's the thing about being hairy is that I'm not hairy the way like a man is hairy. I can see a dude right here with a beard, dude right here with a beard. You look, you're hairy like the man, you're manly hairy. I'm not hairy the way like a man is hairy. I'm hairy the way like a, like a piece of gum that fell on the floor is hairy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Random bits everywhere. I can't really tell where it begins or where it ends. Guys, to put it into perspective, I have two happy trails. That is what's going on. I have one in the front, one in the back. And here's some insider info for you. That's actually not two happy trails. That's just one unhappy U-turn. That's all that is. <laughs> Called the trail of tears to give you to close your eyes of water. Uh, you guys have been great. That's it for me. Give it up for your host. Hey. Yeah. Evan Johnson, thank you for joining us. Great jokes, Evan. Great thank jokes. Thank you very much. God, uh, is, is this high difference making yeah, you uncomfortable? I'm getting real mad right now. <laughs> Seeing red, oh my, I mean, oh wait, the light's red. Oh, that, yeah, that's just, that's on me, the, light, light, the light's light. facing me, the no, red light's just, facing it's me. It's just a bandage on my hand. <laughs> oh yeah, what happened there, man? I've been oh gosh, all night. it was crazy, man. I was uh, doing this photo shoot yesterday, oh. uh, <laughs> and I was attacked. By just someone? By a bicycle. Oh dang, you got hit it's, by a bike? And it's not the first time. No, the bike, it, it bit me and stabbed me in the hand. Oh dang. I've also been stabbed in the leg. And by that's a bike. why I I'm tell not... people in Denver train your bikes, all right? Train, train your, your, bikes. your bikes. Jeez Louise. Tired with these bikes off their leashes and biting people. <laughs> this is an example of what happens, all right? I've been bitten twice. I think the bike needs to be put down at this point. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to kill that bike. All so. right, Evan, where can we see more of your comedy? Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I run a show every third Friday of the month at the Dangerous Theater called Sing Song Ding Dong. It's uh, comedians do a set, and then they play a song with a live band behind them. Uh, that's happening October 18th. I'm also uh, in the Comedy Works New Faces contest. Uh, that happened in every Monday and Wednesday at the Comedy Works Downtown Club. All right, awesome. And you know what? I also have something to relate to you on is the Johnson thing. My last name is also Johnson. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. my dad's African, and people Just are like, how of, do you have a place. last name that's Johnson? Right here, yeah. Same thing. I say, how do you think it happened? <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Hell yeah. They don't like that. I No, they don't. Well, I like it, dude. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's keep hilarious doing to keep watch doing the reaction, it. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I hear when white people talk, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, awesome. Uh, Evan Johnson, everyone, give it up, give it up, give it up. All right, cool. So we've got one more comic tonight before we get into the music component. So let's welcome Piper Shepard to the stage. Thank you, guys. I've got some big news. I am moving to Seattle at the end of the month, so I'm pretty excited. I like Seattle because Seattle, a lot like Denver, is on the forefront of legalizing drugs. You know, Denver just legalized mushrooms, and I think Seattle's gonna be the first place to legalize heroin. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Their city's most famous landmark is actually a giant needle, so. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. 
That is real. Um, I have been traveling a lot this year. I was visiting some family in Memphis, and it's always fun visiting family because just so you all know, I have a much better than me younger sister. So it's always fun getting asked the questions, right? They're like, Darby, what's going on in your life, girl? What's going on? And she's like, well, I'm going to graduate from CU Boulder this year. They're like, Piper, what's going on in your life? And I'm like, I recently traded in my car for a DUI. <laughs> so <laughs> things are going great. You know, I was out in Memphis. I was visiting my grandmother who was dying. And she died while I was out there. Yeah. It was at the end of March. And they kept putting this funeral off. And they kept putting it off and putting it off. And by the time they had it, it was Easter weekend. And I got my hopes up. I was like, well, shoot, maybe she'll bounce back, right? <laughs> Um, she did not, that's fine, but I've been, I've been going on dates. I recently went on a date with this guy and we both did acid. So really that's like we went on a thousand dates. <laughs> yeah. It's like we started and ended an entire relationship in one night. <laughs> and this fella had very long hair. But you all already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he had a crew cut or a job. No. That's fine. He only wanted to go out with me because of what I looked like. Uh, he thought that I was a manic pixie dream girl. I was like, nope, just the regular kind of mental illness, yeah? <laughs> just the normal kind. You know, I like to treat my mental illness like they treated hysteria in the 19th century with masturbation, so, yeah. We did not go out on a second date because we were doing drugs for the first one, so nobody got finished. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm also bisexual. I think we all know what that means, right? Bisexual means I'm going to the meat market and I got no dietary restrictions. That's really gross. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I'm bisexual, it just means I get tested all the time, right? That's all it means. I'm also polyamorous, right? Multiple lover kind of girl. I'm polyamorous, but only in theory. <laughs> My polyamory is a lot like having a liberal arts degree. It's ultimately useless, because I'm not really doing anything with it. <laughs> Like, I don't have the experience of other polyamorous people. I never had a boyfriend and a girlfriend at the same time. I don't qualify for these kinds of jobs, but I still apply, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm into polyamory, you know? I think it's a cool way to live. Monogamy people, they don't think that at all. <laughs> they think they're so much better than us, and they always argue the same point. They're like, well, you know what? Polyamorous relationships don't last very long, all right? They just fall apart real quick. They don't last long. Monogamous relationships are built to last. They last longer. I'm like, sure, fine. You know, well, technically, parents last longer than grandparents. Doesn't make them better. You know? <laughs> Come on. If anything, I like my grandparents more because they don't live long enough for me to resent them. <laughs> OK, well. <laughs> That made everybody sad. <laughs> no, I, I found out that I was bisexual and polyamorous at the same time because I lost my virginity in a three-way. Um, I don't remember which one of them took it. But I do know that that couple is not married anymore. So <laughs> that means I took their divorce virginity. Yeah. Been the three-way girl ever since, you know what I mean? I know this because last year I got invited to be in three different threesomes in the same night, three different couples. I'm like, that is too many, all right? <laughs> Trying to do the math. Like, how many Ubers and brunches am I about to have to pay for to pull this off, right? Sounds expensive. I don't want that, you know? I just want to go out on a regular date, and the world argues with me. They're like, no, Piper, you work best as like a, a, a cameo appearance in other people's sex adventures. Like, yeah, it's like I'm showing up for late night with Chad and Sarah, and Sarah's not really bisexual, and she's so mad the whole time. <laughs> it's fair. You know, I don't want to be 
the three-way girl, to be honest. I'm a little awkward sexually. I kind of have a bit of the sexual autism. Right? I uh, never even looked a dick directly in the eye, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't get the sex autism. It's not fun. I got it from the HPV vaccine. That's where you get it. All right, well, I have a friend who is into astrology, who is an adult, and I think that's weird. He's very extra about it. Every time I see him, he's like, yeah, Piper, I'm an Aries, dude, Aries, okay? Aries is the number one sign in the zodiac. Aries is a fire sign. Fire is the best out of all the elements. And I was like, oh my God, did you know that you're an adult man and not a Pokemon? <laughs> and he did not, he did not know that. <laughs> And I thought it was very funny when my fire sign friend burned his house down. That's a true story. This guy burned his house down trying to defrost a frozen Capri Sun in the microwave? What? Oh my, yeah. I'm like, it's too bad I wasn't around for that. These kind of things wouldn't happen if I was hanging out because my zodiac sign is basic human intelligence. I'm kidding, it is bipolar disorder, okay? <laughs> yeah, I do, I got the BP, y'all, I got the bipolar. I don't, like to, I don't like to tell people that I have bipolar disorder because it's highly stigmatized, right? I prefer to use the other term, the old school term, manic depressive. Sounds a little bit classier, you know what I'm saying? Like if I say I'm bipolar, I kinda sound like I might shoot up a high school. But if I say I'm manic depressive, I sound like I teach at that high school. <laughs> yeah, classy. It's like if I say I'm bipolar, it sounds gross, like I have herpes, yeah. But if I say I'm manic depressive, that sounds like I said, I get cold sores sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. You could also say it like I got the manic D, y'all, you know? <laughs> And that really sounds like I'm just having sex with a tweaker, so, <laughs> yeah. I was talking to this guy recently who was like, yeah, I really like a girl that's like mentally messed up in the head. I think that's hot. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, I'm picking up what you're throwing down. It's like, I really like a guy that's got cystic fibrosis, <laughs> you know? I think that's really hot, because diseases are, are sex fetishes now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, they are. Um, yep. You know, I do like, uh, I'm a big fan of age appropriate relationships. Love those. Yep, I love older men. Um, I just hate to see teachers losing their jobs. That's always really sad, but yeah. I like, I like old guys, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say that when like a really old dude goes out with a way younger lady, that that's not creepy, but I think it should be okay if I do it. Um, and that's, that's just because I'm an old person trapped in the body of a young person, all right? It's called scoliosis. <laughs> yeah. No, I did like this guy who was about 15 years older than me, and he was not about it. I was like, no way, gross, 15 years apart. We didn't grow up with the same movies and television. I don't think you're gonna get my references. And I was like, really? References? Okay, we're doing that. Like, what do I even need to know? <laughs> what do I need to know? Members of Poison other than Brett Michaels? <laughs> what? Why do you know the time Tom Hanks had a drinking problem on Family Ties? Hey, listen, I play Trivial Pursuit. I know all kinds of stuff, buddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, He's so old, he doesn't even realize why it's a faux pas to like your own statuses on Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you see my point. This is why older people and younger people should date because we teach each other, right? It's like I could teach you how to properly use Facebook. You could teach me why Caddyshack is supposed to be funny. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna get out on that. Thank you so much, give it up for your wonderful host. All right, Piper, Piper, everyone. Thank you. Gosh, that was such great comedy. I can't believe you're going to leave us now to go Northwest. Yeah, I'm going to the Northwest. Aren't you worried about all the gray? No, I'm 
I'm ready to get to all those freaking bisexual polyamorous kids in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they all live. That's Is why that? Yeah, that's that's where they came from, and that's where all of them are. So, okay, yeah. so you they were like, you have to come here. Here's a free place to live. <laughs> and then the, just come be out here. Yep. So, well, uh, we wish you the best of luck. Where can we see you before you leave? Are you, are you doing any more sets? Well, I'm actually going to be in Wichita, Kansas, and Eureka, California here in a couple weeks. So right. I don't know. We're going to po hopefully put together a going away party slash comedy show. Um, and you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. If you look up Piper Shepard, um, I have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. And I post all my updates there. So, yeah, we're going to have some sort of going away party here in a few weeks. So. All right. Give it up for Piper. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, this is open music sessions, and you know what that means? I mean, that means music is on its way. We've had really great four comics. Uh, th shout out to Daryl Daryl Holiday for uh, our nonprofit spotlight. Uh, we have a tip jar, I believe, for the comics. So if you enjoyed the comics, throw some cash in that jar. Let's get these folks paid for their jokes because. I was over there having a great time in the corner in the dark, so I don't know about you guys. All right, well, uh, coming up for us next is Rare Birds, but before that, we have a PSA, so let's throw to that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Cool. Yeah, thanks so much, you guys. Come on the party, some Titanic magic. Oh. I tell you, your dancers look great out there dancing. All right, welcome back to Open Music Sessions here at Denver Open Media. Thank you if you're tuning in on 92.9 FM, 89.3 HD3, or if you're watching right now on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Dele, and coming up for us next, We've got Rare Bird. Let's hear it for Rare Bird, everybody. OK. It's all you. Hey, everybody. We're Rare Birds. Hello. Hello. I the dollar sign at the end of that. Cause you can't forget the shine. Can't forget the gleam. Thanks to all the Thanks comedians. To all the go, go bling, bling. Yeah, y'all are you're hilarious. Thanks for making us laugh. We needed that. God damn. You're doing your part in yeah. this shitty world. This crappy world. But I get, I. That's not even, I that's not even my strike yet. Like 10 seconds. I understand 10 why. 10 seconds um, in, Kia, come on. Why Piper was like, hey, come on, Kia. Bipolar and then manic. Do you see how they're just dressing that shit <laughs> that up was, to make it look like a stuff. fucking care 10 bear? 10 seconds in. I got manic depression. Like, okay. We feel you. <laughs> that's all they're like, you're riding now a we're bike. Forever. I'm depressed. We're gonna try <laughs> to be <laughs> as clean as we can. It's Key a little words. sexy for most people, so. But we're gonna start out with our little uh, beat set, so definitely there's nothing you can. I'm gonna underline about as we can, so just remember <laughs> those three words.
clap. Fuck, 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 fuck. Thank you. We mean that song. In case you was wondering. In case you were wondering about. Nah, <laughs> I don't think they wonder about us. I'm gonna hide behind my vocal effects some more. Cause I'm into it. <laughs> Literally the desert, so I'm gonna take that advice. We live in the desert? <laughs> the desert is a real place, and we live in it. It's not uh, the frontier. <laughs> it's the front strange, as I like to call it. <laughs> You're like, what are, what's gonna, ha something happened. <laughs> you just don't, you're just out here with nothing? What are you gonna get water and a coat? Like it's gonna snow in a second. I know you're in a bathing suit, but it's gonna snow, trust me. <laughs> Honey, I'm not playing. We on this air. I'm like a I'm like a chihuahua. You see me in my auntie fit, I'm in this card again. Shut up, acting like y'all don't see it. <laughs> you look at me put my glasses hey, on. Hey, you respect look, your auntie underground. Respect. Uncle Tio, 
need you to respect Anti Underground okay. right now. I mean it. I see all y'all being bad. <laughs> but we let I'm you. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not auntie that's like. We're like, don't get caught. Girl. Seriously. You walked up in here like that? Woo, <laughs> woo. <laughs> okay, baby. You better have some good barbecue with you though. I'm gonna take these glasses off, act like I don't see nothing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you for that little That's ditty. It's a croony, a croony ditty. Yeah. All right. Let's All right, yeah. let's give these. What you thinking? Poor folks. Let's do. Aw, look at our right. name with like the yellow. That's so cute. Look at that. 
Hey, I'm still there looking at the screen. It's like, where? You ready for this one? Should we do this one? Where? Yeah, yeah you like oh, it like yeah, that. Baby. All I can hear is like, do na na na. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? I'm big dog. Don't worry about it. <laughs> when I talk to you like this, <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> Turn the left a little bit. That's fine. Hey, all right. Yeah, let's let's get them. I I enjoy this one. You already started. You're already way ahead of me. It's just like our content is kind of hey, uh, it's kind of sexy. sexy. You know the ones who make gay gangster rap? Do y'all guys want to do a, like a no cussing kind of? <laughs> I still. Her mom calls our music gay gangster rap, and that's what's up. My mom my listens mom to my music, so the rest of you can too. So it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, huh? let's, let's let's do this let's dead do beat. Dead beat. Oh, 
Why you running? You look so scared. Tired and restless. Giving from their cries. Why you running? Calm as a little ball. I'm thinking in a creepy tone. Go in a shake off. I'm getting a notion, I'm telling you. Most of them scoping, I need the corrosions itself. Can we get the program? Trials surround us, I'm guilty. And he in the moment to moment will give, and those little things gonna be sniffing. I'm hoping you're lazy, get tied to another, and making no moves cause you tripping. Nothing I are really different. Well, it's I for a night when the mind is inside the antennas that build on the vision. I'm getting my chips and they crispy. Whispering tones in my ear can be sifted. Lifted on high with the goddess, I missed it. Deep in the night, it's a whole other mission. Pressed up, all down, paying cost to be the boss. Take your time, slow roll, you're rushing, it could be a loss. And shawty so fine, I'm a shock, I'm deep in the crowd, and she picking me out. I don't have a doubt on the route, just ramming my tongue, I'm keeping them down still. Why you running? Don't have a doubt on the route, ramming my tongue, keeping them down still. Tired and I'm restless, screaming from their crimes. Why you running? That's okay, you can call me that, that's fine. I'll let you call me certain things. Most people do, and they have no (laughs) idea why it even has to be that way. They do it. One more? Let's do one more. Let's let's put this surf deep on them. Sooner with no rag, did you give me any tool? I make anything my crap. Coming at the wood 
work. Hop in with first, get my loot from my door. Got picked up by the curb. Ain't no thing to be me. Don't know why you're concerned. You asking for a lesson, bet your ass gon' learn that's word. No need to lie. Give a honey job, and she never asks why. This yoni on my lips every time the sun rise. Got a pan of quesadilla, scorch her tears, thick bra, no surprise. What you mean I ain't allowed to have myself a sense of pride? I'm validated, dedicated, motivated, elevated to a level you won't see with DMT. I got 88, how did you, how she protecting me? Storytelling by the shore, pinnacle part of the Got a pack in a cell, 70 plus degrees. I got heat up on my tongue, but they sit out the freezing tea. They ain't ready, ain't no say. They're not ready for the reefs, they're not ready for the shock, bearing teeth when I speak. Have a seat. Keep in mind the flock is red. I've been singing on my songs from top the peaks. Got the thunder from above you. Every time I hit your depths, you know I take you to the league and see the wonder. I got bars made to eat. God is less speak. Respect is all that. I can't ask what in need. Do I need to repeat? Not at all. Think I serve deep, shot it. Hey, head underneath, shot it. I head to the brink, you see. Huh. Take a drink, uh, and take a drink from the fountains that flow right before us. Observing is glorious. I'm down for exploring, back with the chorus to a place we can meet. I gotta serve deep when I wanna. I got to tread underneath. Gotta serve deep on these gardening tools. Yes, chuckle with me. <laughs> yeah, I gotta serve deep, huh? Had the moon on my face. I found you at the box, yes. See, I've been here before, but I'm repaired with the glass here. Yeah. Giving thanks to Oshun, can we gain her from the lost ways? Have me riding with the boxes. I switched the game up to some jobs, yeah. Well, I put in work. I sharpen every sword so I murk. It hurts. Well, I put in work. I hit the lamp in the corner with a curve. It strike a nerve, well, it's well deserved. They think that they can disturb. Well, who let you when I ain't hurt? Cause I'm gonna search. I'm gonna search, I said. I'm gonna serve deep. And I'm gonna search deep, so that's two. And I'm gonna serve deep, that's three. Let me start from the top. Yes, I'm gonna serve deep, that's one. And I'm gonna search deep, that's two. And I'm gonna serve deep, that's three. I'm gonna head underneath. I gotta surf deep. I gotta, I gotta. Take a trip. Surf deep. Thank you, we're rare birds. Don't forget the dollar sign. Good night. Oh. All right, let's give it up for rare birds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uncle Tia, Auntie Underground. Oh, shit. Let's go. Wow. Yes. All right, love the anti swag though. I, I saw you wearing those glasses when I was up here, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, those are fresh." I'm gonna have to go it's, see what that's um, about. It's purely practical. <laughs> a lot of people think it's aesthetic. I lose my glasses often, and uh, I'm also allergic to certain things in my glasses. So, with my convenience, I could be like, "Uh, -uh. Boop, right on my chest." Wonderful. Yeah. All right, rare birds. Where can we find more of your music? Uh, so you can find us on SoundCloud under Rare Birds with the dollar sign. Um, the easiest Bandcamp. way to yeah, Bandcamp, uh, Rare we Birds. We have tapes. Yes, we got really tapes. Wanna. This is how All you right. spell our name. So if you need any help, here, gracious host. Here, yes, yes, Call that yes. Yes. Um, R A R E B Y R D. Yeah, that's right. Dollar sign. Right, right, right. And if you want to follow us on that's social it. media, Rare Flight Official. Okay. Okay. Instagram. All right, we thank you, thank you, songs, thank you. Huh? Thanks, bud. All right, awesome. Well, this has been another edition of Open Music Sessions. I've been your host, Dele. I want to give a shout out to Daryl Holiday from CityBureau.documenters.org. Shout out to our comedians tonight, Ben Bryant, Anthony Crawford, Evan Johnson, Piper Shepard. Thank you to Rare Birds for that performance. And last but not least, thank you to those in the studio with us tonight, thank you to those listening on the radio, and thank you to those tuning in on Facebook Live. Got to thank our sponsors as well, the Mars Donuts, Renegade, Sexy Pizza, Bohemian Foundation, Crazy Mountain Brewery, Intrepid, and Denver Arts and Venues. We'll be back, same place, same time, next first Friday. Check us out. Thank you.